Hello and welcome to Hashtag Discover LC's third stream of the day on the sixth day of Discover LC. So we've been covering loads and loads of content. Earlier on we talked about engineering, but now we're sort of focusing on our motor vehicle side of things and the motor vehicle courses that run alongside the engineering courses but are slightly different. Um, so let me bring in our expert, our you know intelligent man in the room. Um, it's Tony. Hi, Tony. <laughs> oh no, you're right. Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Do you want to sort of tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at the college? Uh, my name's Tony Jakes. I'm the program leader for uh, body body and paint, uh, commonly called accident repair, um, and also entry level three course that we run at Leicester College. I've been at college for at Leicester College for 15 years. Um, my my main area is the accident repair side of things, but. I do also run the evening classes and um, the entry level three course. So. Cool, perfect. So we're going to be talking a little bit about your course specifically and also some of the other motor vehicle courses because I know that you teach on a couple of the other ones as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah the lower level stuff for uh, mainly entry threes and I do a little bit for level one as well. Wow. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what kind of things students could expect to learn on the courses? Well, if they come onto the uh, the body and paint course, the accident repair course, um, generally speaking, you, you know, the, at the moment we're doing a level one course where there are body and paint units involved in it. So three of their units will be body, paint and valid stim. Um, so it makes up for maybe just under, a, well, around about a third of the course. So that's at level one. So if you're coming into level one you'll be, and you want to do a motor vehicle course, you're not quite sure what you want to do. Um, there, the level one course does cover a broad uh, spectrum of skills. So, there will be um, um, ele uh, electrical, exhaust, um, engine, suspension, chassis, uh, with body and paint units involved in them. Um, at level two, um, the pathway will be either body or paint, if that's the route you want to take when it comes to uh, accident repair. If you go uh, with the level two uh, paint course. Uh, this will be a progression route from level one. Um, then it will just be about the refinishing side of things or the body repair side of things because it's a little bit, the only way I can kind of describe it is if you were on a building site, if, you know, you could say, well, all buildings are the same. But if you look at um, painting and decorating and carpentry, you know, yes, they are in, a, in the same umbrella of skills, but they are completely different um, skill sets. So that's why at level two, we do branch out and do subject specific courses. Um, with, uh, but they say the level one course, will you can go on to body and paint. And we have got some students from the level one course doing a progression route, but also on the level one, uh, there will, there's also the, <coughs> going to the mechanic side of things. So they'll be going on to uh, a level two course cool. in that subject area. Ah, perfect. Um, so, so what level would I have to learn at to be able to paint, paint like a lightning bolt on a car? What kind of level would I, what's, what am I aiming for with that one? Okay, so you've been looking at the level two um, side of things, but, you know, we are accident repairers. We're not doing custom work. Mm -hmm. However, some of the, the, the skills that you do learn at level two, you know, you can adapt them to do custom work. And that's one of the things about the refinishing side of things. You know, it's a case of, the, you know, the basic understanding, the preparation, how paint works, how preparation is conducted. You can use those skills on, on other things other than cars, you know. So the transferable skills are quite wide, you know. With, with the skills that I have, I could paint all sorts of things um, from plastic uh, items to anything that's natural. So I could do plant, uh, which is trucks, lorries, uh, JCBs, diggers, uh, motorcycles. Um, and from the plastic perspective, you could do pretty much anything, you know, anything that's plastic that wants painting. I watched a YouTube clip the other day where some guy had been on a training course at Leicester College and he was painting UPVC windows and the outside of houses. So, I mean, the, the in colour at the moment is uh, a grey colour. So he was, as opposed to you uh, spending many, many thousands of pounds changing your double glazing from white to grey, um, you can employ this guy to come and come around your house and learn all the skills that he learned at Leicester College on the one unit, which was a plastic unit, and you could go out painting outside of double glazing if that's what you wanted to do. So the skills, the skills, the transferable skills are massive. You know, it's, it's just that 
it just happens to be in the shape of a car that you know we yeah. do things cool amazing so obviously the course with something like that you need to be a bit more hands-on you need to learn those skills how what is the practical work to written work balance like for the course it's it, uh, well i can only talk about last year um because it's a, a, a teaching program uh, it's divided into three so there'll be workshop there's technical uh, so there'll be classroom work and also there's the um the mech which is the maths and english cross college um elements of it so it'll be around about a third so your your college um for a full-time course will be a minimum of 16 hours um but that will include your maths and english but what we tend to do is uh, because we have uh, there's only two lecturers doing um, accident repair if there is availability in the workshops we i try and get as much uh, practical uh, experience as possible for the kids because that's where they like to learn you know more hands-on than classroom work fantastic cool um, and are there any exams or any sort of you know sit down computer exams that students have to do in order to pass the course um we are looking at going with uh, an awarding body called City and Guilds. If uh, we do go with those, then there will be uh, online tests. So there will be, um, throughout the year, there'll be um, formative assessments. In, um, so there will be, at the end of every unit, um, so it could be from a, a, a paint side of thing, you know, it could be looking at preparation to accept primers. So at the end of that unit, there will be um, a, a formative assessment and at the end of the year, there will be uh, summative assessments, which are online tests. Um, if we decide to stay with the awarding body that we're on at the moment, then it'll just be uh, coursework in folders. So as soon as the folders are completed, of which you will have a practical uh, folder and a knowledge-based folder, as soon as those are finished, that will be the completion of the course. So it's kind of set out over 36 weeks, and the assessment plan ties in with that. Um, so. Uh, an academic year is 36 weeks so we try and divide it up into four and try and keep to those keep those units divided equally into the 36 weeks fantastic cool um so with a lot of courses we need to sort of go in prepared with kind of kit and resources that the students need and a lot of time that uh curriculum areas will provide kit lists is there a kit list do students have to buy the kit and um, before they start the course yeah i mean your basic uh, personal protective equipment uh, to go into the workshop will be um, safety boots and cotton overalls. Um, any other personal protective equipment that's subject specific to a task, um, we will supply. So if you're coming on the uh, the body course uh, and, you, and you're doing uh, mags welding, then there's obviously fumes involved. We'll have fume extraction equipment, but you'll also have your respiratory equipment supplied for you. If you're doing the refinishing side of things and you're in a spray booth, and you're spraying um, uh, car, car paint, then the fumes are quite harmful. So we supply with air fed masks. Um, so when it comes to equipment, from a practical perspective, the minimum requirement for us is that you would buy the safety boots and the cotton overalls. Mm. From a technology point of view, you know, you've got to come ready with uh, folders, pens, um, you know, so, it's, it's just as important get being prepared for the technology side of things as it is for the practical side of things. And one of the things that we do tend to find a lot uh, is that uh, students come without pens and are always trying to catch pens off the tutors. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it gets a bit... The thing is, which, what we're trying to do really for every student is uh, trying to get them ready for industry. You know, this isn't school yeah. as such. It's not compulsory education. This is getting you guys, uh, getting the students ready for industry. And everybody that works on motor vehicle are ex industry staff. You know, we're not, we've, we've all worked, and I, mean, I worked for, so for 20 years with Volkswagen, Audi, Mercedes, you know, all the top places. And that reflects the skill levels of the, all the rest of the staff in the staff room. Mm. So we know what it's like and what is expected of people in industry. Um, so, as well as doing the course and the academic side of things, we also try and embed what it would be expected of you as an apprentice or as, a, as an employee um, within the motor vehicle environment, which is massively important yeah. um, because, you know, if they try and take the attitude of what they may have had in uh, compulsory education into work, you know, they're going to be in for a bit of a shock. Mm -hmm. So we try and uh, get them ready for those areas yeah. as well. And you always got to be prepared. And a pen is one of your best friends when you're doing any any new job. <laughs> I've got one on hand, really. I know. <laughs> just, yeah, always got a pen on hand just in case. 
Um, so a job like this, obviously, you need to be ready to go out in the workplace, like you were saying. So is there any work experience or placement opportunities available to students on the course? Yeah, we have work workplace coordinators um, that uh, do check garages. Ultimately, there will I think each student will have to complete 32 hours of uh, work experience. Um, <coughs> ideally, the students would sort that out for themselves. Um, so if, if they had a they had a garage local to them and they were prepared to take the students on for a week, then that would be ideal. It's convenient for the students and, you know, potentially the, uh, the garage may even offer them a job at the end of the, uh, at the end of the academic year once the skill, you know, they've got some skills and a qualification behind them. Um, if um, there isn't that availability of having a garage on your doorstep, then our workplace coordinators do have a list of places where we can potentially offer them the work experience that's required um but you know we look at that nearer the time really fantastic just a reminder if you do have any questions that you'd like to ask do pop them in the comments and we'll try and answer those before the end of the stream so do pop those down below and we'll answer those um so in terms of the you know job prospects like you were saying and and where it can lead students what what kind of career could students go into after they finish the motor vehicle courses well i mean it's quite interesting, really, because um, when students come and, you know, they, most people that are sort of 16, 17, leaving school, they like the idea of working on cars, and I was no different. Um, but like I was saying to you before, um, you know, the, the transferable skills can lead you to all sorts of different areas. Um, I had a, a chap on my course um, a couple of years ago who was an older guy. He was in his 30s. And... Um, he left he with his level two qualification he set up his own business that very year uh, and he's and he refurbishes alloy wheels now so you know it isn't just a case of i'm going to go out there and be a panel beater to repair cars or a car sprayer to spray cars the skills that um they could lead you to are, 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 are massive really um so you could be just doing uh, paint um restoration working on uh, old vehicles, uh, classic vehicles. You could, I mean, I've, we've even sprayed aircraft in our spray booths. So, this, you know, whatever has paint on it can be sprayed. And the, the skills that we teach at the college are transferable. So you can pretty much adapt them to whatever uh, whatever environment you want to work in. If you're passionate about motorcycles, you can spray motorcycles. If you're passionate about uh, cars, that's absolutely fine. Um, you can either go into a garage and work within a garage environment, or you could set up your own your own business, get yourself a van and a, some some kit that uh, that's suitable for what's called smart repairs, which is you going out uh, in your van with um, a scaled down version of a body shop and doing small scuffs and alloy wheel repairs at people's houses. So you know it's it's, it's massive, really. Yes, yeah, so there's loads of loads of like transferable skills that you're saying. Mm. It's fantastic. So, what kind of skills should a student come in with? Is there a certain course that students should have studied at GCSE or try and study at GCSE before they do the course, or is it really as long as you've got a passion for it, you're happy to teach them from scratch? Well, under normal circumstances, what we'd do would be to have the the potential students in for an interview and have a chat. But obviously, with the COVID, it's not been that easy to do that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but the, what I would suggest to them would be um, at level two, if you're coming on in a direct course, direct entry course, if the way you would get into it would be from the GSC, GCSE perspective, because it's a diploma, you're going to have to have a minimum of a three in maths and English. And, you know, if, if you have a relative or a friend that has got some kind of experience in accident repair, that would be a massive bonus, but it's not essential. Um, the, only, the only entry requirements for level two would be uh, level three in maths and English. Um, but we would, I would consider um, people who are, haven't got, haven't quite got the level threes, but I've worked with um, a friend or a relative every weekend, you know, doing garage work, and they've got a basic understanding of abrasives and how uh, cars are put together. That would be a massive advantage and be taken into consideration. Cool. And would students who don't have those GCSE grades be able to sit, reset the GCSEs alongside the course? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, you know, if you haven't, what, because it's a teaching program, you know, there will be maths and English involved anyway. 
Um, and I know that we tend to get a lot of groaning from students. They say, oh, we've just left school and we, we, we don't want to do maths and English. But unfortunately, it's a, it's a requirement from the government. It's not a Leicester College um, requirement. Yeah. So the government has said, you know, uh, in order to upskill the nation, no matter what course you do in further education, you're going to have to do maths and English alongside it. I think the only exceptions are 19 plus if you're over 19 or you have grade fours in maths and English. Um, but, you know, if you haven't got those grades, then you will be doing maths and English alongside it. And, and it's something that's inescapable anyway, you know, especially in my field when it comes to refinishing. You can't escape mathematics. You know, you're looking at quantities, you're looking at percentages of materials, you're looking at mixing ratios. Mm. Um, so and also just simple things, well, I say simple things, but essential things such as uh, working out your wages. You know, if you're on a, a bonus system, um, then you've got to learn you've got to learn your maths uh, because yeah. your bonus scheme may be related to um, your hourly rate so if you're on say 10 pound an hour and you've earned 16 hours bonus you know it's got to be that will be added on to your wages and then you've got to take away your um, your tax and insurance so it's just, you know you can't escape maths it's, it's, it follows you around everywhere yeah, so math is, is important in this subject as it is in any of the other ones. And that's one of the things we learned this week is that, you know, math is a really key skill to have sort of mm -hmm. going forward, you know, into college and into the future. And yeah. um, so sort of talking of the future, once students finish the level three course, will they be able to go straight into being a mechanic or, you know, body paint repair straight out or will they need another qualification on top of it? Well, not necessarily. I mean, that is a progression route you could take. Uh, you know, for, from body and paint at this stage is isn't a level three course, but we are looking into it. Um, but if you're looking at other courses um, on level threes for mechanics, uh, so, so to speak, then um, you'd be looking at an access course, uh, which could potentially take you to university. Um, but like I said to you before, you know, I've had um, learners that have been in, just come straight and did uh, 36 weeks at level two. And they went on to set up their own business. You know, I think if you're passionate about it, um, you know, you do, you, you need to try and get as much information out of myself and uh, the accident repair team. Um, then you'll maximise your chances of being employable. You know, um, but you, you know, you, this is one of these things where you've got to take it seriously, regardless of what course you go on to. You know, if you're coming on to any course at Leicester College, you've got to be passionate about what you're doing. In, uh, in Otherwise, if you're just signing up on a course because you haven't got nothing else to do, then you're going to find it very hard. Um, but if you're if you're passionate about engineering or mechanics or hairdressing or whatever it's going to be, then it's going to be a joy coming to the college, and uh, it's going to give you a really good foundation for that whatever um, vocation that you choose. Cool, fantastic, thank you. Um, so what what campus or sort of what area of the campus will students be based at when they're doing? studies okay so um entry level threes and level ones they will be over um in e block which is a brand new building at the side of the main campus at abbey park um level twos will be probably based uh well will be based in b block which is the engineering block uh again opposite the main road from a block um where we will probably be doing well where their workshops and their classrooms will be so, I say level level one and entry three will be over in uh, E block, and the other groups will be over in B block. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so the last sort of set of questions we have now. So if you do have any questions, do pop them in the comments now, and we'll hope to get them before the end. But we are wrapping up very soon. Um, so how do students go about applying for the courses? Like any other course, really. Um, what we've got, if you go onto the Leicester College homepage and look, if you're interested in the body repair side of things, if you punch in on the search engine uh, body repair, uh, there will be two available for you. There'll be the refinishing, refinishing course, um, which is C2935, and the body level two course, which is C2934. Um, if if you're coming at the entry level group, there's no body and paint involved in that, but this is um, for people who haven't got the qualifications for level one mechanics. Uh, the code is C4861. And again, it's a bit of a taste, of course. Uh, it's a, a 
uh, well, it is what it is. It's an entry course, so you would learn a little bit about a variety of activities uh, for motor vehicle. The progression route for that would be the level one course, which is C five one two zero, and then from there on, you would take either the body and paint route or um, the mechanic route. So basically, go on to Leicester College, go on to search for courses. If you're interested in the accident repair, punch in on the uh, in the search engine accident repair or body repair, and it'll come up with those courses, and then you just follow the links from there. Fantastic, thank you. So the just while we're on the subject, the entry uh, level three course that covers you know a wide variety of um, subjects to do with mm -hmm. motor vehicles. So it's really you know. A little taster menu of what you can get into and just helps you sort of decide what you want to do yeah it is i mean if you've um if you've not done as well as you'd have hoped in your in your uh, in your school your secondary school and you've only, you've left with level one maths and english then probably the entry level three course will be for you um but alongside that you'll be doing your maths and english to help you uh, increase those grades or improve on those grades which will then give you um access to the level one courses and then up to the level two courses so the gcses or functional skills depending on what you do will also be running alongside your vocational course whichever course that'll be fantastic we've just got a question from youtube from adam that says is there anywhere to park a motorcycle at abbey park as a student doing level two motorsport diploma do you know if there's anywhere to the best place to park a motorcycle or is it just you know in the car park you'll be able to get access to it if you if you if you're studying in B block, um, there is uh, motorcycle parking facilities round the back. Um, but again, you know, once you, it's like anything, you know, to go into the motorcycle area, you've got to go past uh, areas where people will be walking. So just take your time driving up to the motorcycle uh, car park. But yeah, you you can use the motorcycle car parking facilities. If you've got a car, you, you're going to struggle, like all members of staff, you know. Uh, yes, we have the option to buy car park passes, but if you get there early enough, sometimes there's plenty, you know, there's, there's some spaces yeah. on the road. But there's no car parking facilities for students as such. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Well, thank you for joining me, Tony. This was really informative, and hopefully those watching at home found it just informative as well. Um, if you do have any questions after the stream's finished, or if you're watching this back a little bit later on and it's no longer live, do message us, uh, drop us a DM on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, and we'll try to answer those questions for you. Or um, you can email us, info at leicestercollege.ac.uk, and we'll answer all your questions for you. Um, now, Tony, do you have any like, little words of wisdom for anyone that's coming in September? Anything you'd sort of what to say to students just make sure that you you know you you read the perspectives see what leicester college has to offer um because it's really important at this stage of your life that you select the right course you know if this is the, the sort of thing that you're going to be doing for the rest of your life then this is where your journey starts mm. um so really look through the perspective the prospectus um see what you think you you know i would look at basically what hobbies you've got and um, what you enjoy doing in your own time, you know, because if you enjoy doing something, um, then going to work isn't work. You know, for me, I really enjoyed refinishing cars. So for me, going to work on a daily basis, spraying cars, uh, seeing them coming in damaged and going out as they were before the um, before the accident, gave me a massive, massive boost. So whether it's uh, accident repair, mechanics or hairdressing or whatever it is, just be passionate about what you want to do. Yeah. Um, and then it won't be hard work at all. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Tony, for joining us. Um, I'll let you get back to Saturday now. Um, <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, we're back a in a little bit with Uniform Public Services. So if you are looking for those, we're back at 3 p.m. with that stream. And we're also talking about applying to Leicester College. So any general applying questions or enrollment questions, you can ask us later on at 4 o'clock. So we'll wrap up this now, but thanks, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you hopefully as close to September as we can. 